What's going on, guys? It's your boy K Quinn sixty six back here with another of my Budget Beast franchise videos. This is part two, and today we are going to be looking at the small ball lineup. So, small ball lineup, we had. Who did we have here? Pretty sure we had at point guard. Kendall Marshall. Yeah, it was between Marshall and Dragic. I liked Marshall here. We're going to put him in there. As for the shooting guard, was it throwback Ben Gordon? Who do we have here? Center, small forward. Yeah, Stoss Kisses are small forward. There was Rush and Gordon. I don't remember who it was. Let's see. Yeah, it must have been Rush. So Brandon Rush is going into the two. Then at the three, we had Mobile Madness, Nick Stoskis, I believe. Let's see, uh, McDermott stats. Yeah, it was Stoskis. At the power forward spot, we had our boy Kyle Singler. He can hit that three. He's got decent defense. We're going to run him. At the five spot, there was Myers Leonard, but I think we went with Jaleel Okafor over Leonard. Yeah, all-star Jaleel Okafor. He's got nice stats. They're better than Leonard's overall. We're going to run with him. All right, so I've got a bunch of challenges in head-to-head -head that I'm going to take you to right now. We're going to play a couple of these. Let's see which ones are expiring first. We've got 14, 12 hours, and 14 hours. So let's play these two, and we'll show off that small ball lineup versus a 95 overall defensive lineup. So you can see that this lineup has the triple-double king, Russell Westbrook. He's got all of those boosts. They've got league versus league, Paul George. Master Hassan Whiteside with an extra defensive boost. 95 overall, Antonio McDice, and then playoff J.R. Smith. This by far is the worst player on their lineup, and he still dominates Brandon Rush. If we look at Russell Westbrook versus Kendall Marshall, Kendall has the better dribbling and passing stats. Russell Westbrook beats him everywhere else. Not a big surprise. Heading over to the shooting guard. Rush is a better dribbler than J.R. Smith. But there is nowhere else that's really... Actually, they're not that far off. J.R. has all those boosts, obviously. He's got boosts to speed, three-pointer shooting, and defense. And he still is pretty close. Without that speed boost, Rush would beat him. That three-pointer, he takes by a wide margin. His shooting boost is plus five, so he's only a little bit better than Brandon Rush. Defense, he crushes Rush, but he's got a plus nine boost, so he's actually not that much better. And passing, he's only three better as well. So this is actually a pretty close matchup. Without those boosts, they would be very even cards, surprisingly. That's why this is called a budget beast lineup. All right, next at the small forward spot, we've got Mobile Madness Nick Stauskas, who is a better dribbler than Paul George. George beats him on speed, but again, only with that boost. Beats him on three-pointer, beats him on shooting and defense by a lot. Passing, not by much either, so that's a pretty tight matchup. And again, these are just the base stats on the card. Don't forget to check out nbalive.gg to check out all the hidden stats in the database. Let's see, Kyle Singler versus McDice. Singler has dribbling and three-pointer. McDice has that speed average overall, except that plus five to speed, as we know. Plus seven to speed, actually. His base stats are lower than Singler's. Shooting touch is much better. Defense is a lot higher. Passing not by much. Again, similar card stats. And if we look at Hassan Whiteside, these are pretty even stats. Whiteside beats Okafor in speed. Okafor beats Whiteside in dribbling and three-pointer by a wide margin. Whiteside has the shooting advantage and the defensive advantage. Although the defensive advantage is not by much, he's going to have a plus 7 to his defense. So he's only a 79 in defense. Okafor is a 78, and Okafor takes the passing. So honestly, without those boosts, Okafor on the base stats of the card... Okafor is actually the better player. So Triple Double King Westbrook is the only one with the clear advantage. Let's see how the gameplay works out. So we're going to take it to the head-to-head, -head, and we're going to try out our first chance, our first crack at checking out this Budget Beast lineup. So I start with the ball. Kendall Marshall, I like Singler in this spot. 
for exactly this reason. Very quick closeout. Very quick closeout by McDice. But Singler still drains it. So we were down by three coming into this one, so it's now tied. Let's see if Kendall can take the ball away from the triple-double king. All right, he passes it off. He gets it back, though. Kendall, I don't know if he's going to be able to do that. Good defense there. I think that was Stoskis who got the defense. Let's pass it over to Rush. See if he can just slide in for something. Let's see what we can do here. Oh, he's got a three, a decent three-pointer, and he hits it. So we are now up by three points. We've got a three out of Rush, a three out of Singler. Let's see if we can get a steal. It's not happening there. Let's see if we can get it back again. All right, take number five. Nah, Westbrook, is he's just too good over here. Ooh, good take by McDice. He gets it, and we almost got that block with Okafor. But let's pass the ball up and see if we can do any damage with Kendall Marshall here. I wonder if he can... I don't think he's going to be able to take him off the dribble. Nah, it doesn't look like it. It looks like Westbrook is all over him. Let's give it to Okafor for a two. Gets blocked, but Singler gets in there for the layup. Nice offensive board off the block by Kyle Singler. He gets a two, so he's up to five points on the quarter. Five for Singler, two for Rush. We still can't get anything off of him. Missed the block by a bit, but it was only a two. Let's give a quick pass up to Stoskis, who gets the three off, and he misses it. You could see, obviously, that that uh, little... I don't know what the right word would be for that. The little description there says that the shot was challenged, which it obviously was. It wasn't the best shot. J.R. Smith hits a three, though. Let's, uh, let's give Stoskis another shot here. Let's try to get around for a bit of a better shot. He gets stopped by Westbrook, but he gets around, and he hits the three. So Stoskis also is a fairly reliable three-point shooter. They have points right now off J.R. Smith and McDice, and League versus League Paul George, but McDice gets in and can't bury it, but I mistimed that rebound. Not necessarily Okafor's fault. I'll take the blame on that one. Let's try Kendall Marshall again, see if he can... <sighs> he doesn't have a great spin. He doesn't seem to have any spin. But he still manages to get in and get that layup up and over two defenders. It looks like we might be able to take this. Ooh, got up a bit late on that. Westbrook might... Oh, he's going to miss it. So not only do we take the quarter, but we take the lead in the head-to-head -head matchup. Up by one, considering we were down by three, meaning we had a four-point swing in that one. So the final score is 13-9 to nine for us. And it was a pretty good... You could see that Kyle Singler was probably the best player on that lineup. He had five points. Stoskis was one for two, but he hit a three. We had Kendall Marshall, who got a nice layup. And uh, Brandon Rush hit a three as well. We didn't really take a shot with Okafor because the one that we got up was blocked. So let's move right into the next head-to-head -head matchup. You can see they've got triple-double King Westbrook again. Pete Maravich, this guy is straight fire. I only replaced him with all-star master Steph Curry because Steph Curry is dirty as hell. But if we look at Pete Maravich, his stats are really nice too. He loses a bit in shooting, but his defense is inferior to Rush's. His passing is amazing though. Even with that boost, his, uh, he actually doesn't have, not, he doesn't have a boost to passing. So he's a 95 base card passing, which is great. Three-pointer is very strong. His dribbling is high. But again, the dribbling is... Uh, no, that's not a stat boost. Never mind. The speed is the stat boost. And the speed, he would be tied with Brandon Rush otherwise. So League versus League, Paul George again. Master Whiteside again. And who does he have as his four? He's got fan favorite Bo Outlaw. People really like Bo Outlaw. Personally, I don't get it. I've played him a lot in head-to-head. -head. I don't find his card plays amazingly well. He was one of the first players that I actually traded in because I got fan favorite Paul Pierce. And Bo Outlaw seemed like the worst option out of the few available. Scalabrini, he's a decent option uh, at the big man small forward spot. And Mark Madsen's a very good option at the shooting center spot. So those two I have. I don't have them in any lineups because I have better options. If we look here, I've got Neek at my uh, big man small forward. He's a 94 versus a 93 of Scalabrini. Um, and at the center, I've got Tim Duncan over there in my shooting lineup. So Madsen was not really needed. 
Let's get into this head-to-head matchup, though. Um, Madsen, I, I'm i waiting. Nick Van Exel is the least likely for me to be used uh, as a 96. I've got 97. Wet. I've got 97 Lillard there, the hero of the month, and he is he's awesome. I like his card a lot. Another quick closeout, but it doesn't matter. Kyle Singler drops it anyway. Like I've said in my previous videos, um, Kyle Singler is one of those guys that I used for a long time. He was very expensive. Oh, I mistimed that. He was very expensive for a while. His price has dipped significantly. If you get the chance to pick him up, I definitely recommend it. Oh, a nice step back by Kendall Marshall, but he misses it. He gets that off-balance notification, which is fair. That was a step back shot, not the easiest shot to take. Let's see, we can disrupt it. We can, but Outlaw hits it. Okay, so you get a little bit of a taste for fan favorite Outlaw. He hits the contested, uh, the contested two. It wasn't a three; it was just a layup. So let's dish this out. Back to Singler, who's going to take another two, and he's going to hit it. I think we all can agree at this point that Kyle Singler, as far as budget beasts go for the small ball lineup, might be the best one. Brandon Rush picks up a nice steal, and he's going to go for that three-pointer. Let's see if he hits it. He does. He hits it over coverage. He got the steal. He got the three. I think that speaks highly to his skill level as well. Oh, Whiteside got a nice cut there. I don't know how Whiteside did that, but he did it anyway. Let's go... Back to Singler with another three. He misses it. That's unfortunate. Oh, it wasn't Singler. It was Stauskis. That explains that a little bit better. I was surprised at Kyle Singler missing that. Uh, Russell Westbrook's going to go in. He's going to miss it. That's going to get picked up by Stauskis. Give it back to Kendall Marshall. Let's move this around. Give it to... Oh, I was supposed to go to Rush. Kick it out to Jaleel Okafor. I'm going to take a three-pointer with Jaleel. He hits it. Oh, it's a two. He was on the line. But that was heavy coverage, and he still hit it. Jaleel Okafor is a very, very solid player. <laughs> we get an offensive foul, a moving pick, I guess. Always nice to see that. Let's get the ball back to big old Kendall. He's going to go right into the rack. Oh, he got blocked. He took that shot up a little differently than I was trying to take it. Stauskis seems to hit the second one, but he missed that one. But I slid into the shot. I don't like doing that. It was not on purpose. Let's see if Okafor... No, Okafor can't take the ball away because he passed it off. And I mistimed that completely. So Russell Westbrook gets in for the two. We have about three and a half seconds left. Let's see if we can hit a three with Kendall. He's going to miss that. His three-point shot rating is not terribly high. You can see the little notification at top. It just said missed. It didn't say shot challenged. Usually missed means that it was a decent look and he missed it. But we won the quarter, which is most important, 10-8. to 8. We got a swing, a, a two-point swing to give us a one-point advantage, which is nice. I had one here. This one I found funny. I won the quarter with my AI 4-3. to three. That's so low scoring. I, I have a hard time believing that. That's That's ridiculous. Let's go with one more. Let's see if we can get a different lineup up here. Okay, small ball versus small ball. Let's see who they have. Jeremy Lin. This is going to be T-Mac. Penny Hardaway. LeBron. Christian Leitner. This is a top-tier lineup. And Tim... Oh, Tim Duncan. That's an expensive card. All right. So let's see how they stack up. Kendall Marshall versus Jeremy Lin. Lin beats... Obviously, there's no crazy boosts in this lineup. So Lin beats him on speed, on dribbling, but not by much. He wins the three-point race, but Kendall Marshall is not a three-point shooter. He wins the shooting uh, the shooting competition, let's say. But again, Kendall Marshall, not a huge shooter. He wins on defense by a bit. Kendall Marshall is only the better passer. But not that far off, honestly. Brandon Rush is the same speed as Penny. You can see that Penny's stats basically dog Brandon Rush, but he's not he's not a ton better at the top. Dribbling only by three, three-pointer by four, shooting by eight. Defense and passing is where there's a humongous difference, though. All right, so next, Soup LeBron versus Nick Stauskis. Three-pointer is the same. LeBron is a little faster, slightly better dribbling, better shooter, better defense, better passing. This is a small ball lineup, of course. You can't expect their shooting defense passing to be that high. Small ball lineup passing usually is a little bit better, but they're more speed and dribbling. 
if we look at uh, Kyle Singler versus 96 overall mobile master Christian Leitner, obviously Leitner is going to beat him everywhere. It's not really even close anywhere. So this one's going to be a tough matchup there, especially considering Singler's 6'8 and, and Leitner is 6'11. At the center lineup, though, you can see that it's going to be closer. Jaleel Okafor, slightly faster, slightly better dribbler, much better three-pointer than Duncan, which I'm surprised by because Duncan always kind of had... He had that deep mid-range shot. He could step out for the three occasionally. Um, his shooting is better, his defense is much better, and his passing is, is quite a bit stronger as well. So let's see how these guys fare against the other small ball lineup. This is going to start up in just a second, and we will get into it. I find the loading screens for the game have been a little slower of late. I'm not sure if it's updates or whatnot that's causing it. It's going to kick this out. Oh, I wanted to kick that out to Singler again. I like that original shot with that three-pointer from the power forward. Rush had a good shot there. I'm a little surprised he missed that, honestly. But let's get back on defense. Oh, LeBron takes that in. Yeah, I can't stop him on that. I thought he was going to pull up. He didn't. Let's uh, let's see what we can do here. Marshall, I'm going to wait for a second. I'm going to kick that back to Stoskis, who's taking the two. So he's going to match LeBron two points for two points. Let's see what Kendall Marshall's defense is like on Jeremy Lin. But we're not going to get the opportunity because Lin's going to pass it right off. There's Leitner going in for the shot, which he misses. That surprises me too. His shot rating is pretty high. I'm surprised he missed that one. Oh, almost lost the ball there. But we got it to Singler, who's going to miss the three. Singler, that's his first three-pointer miss, I believe, all day. So you're going to miss that, but we missed the rebound on that because I jumped like a moron. All right, pass it back out to Kendall Marshall. Give it to Okafor because Duncan is trailing a bit. Okafor is going to miss the three as well. All right, time to play a little bit more conservatively, see if we can win the quarter. Here's Penny Hardaway with his dirty AI. He comes up. He misses that surprisingly. I have seen him hit a ton of those, which always, it, it's so ridiculous when he hits those because... Oh, right, Kendall Marshall hits the three. But yeah, oh, what happened? Network timeout. <laughs> Here is a good example of how random stuff can happen. I am at home. I have very strong Wi-Fi here. I am not in the process of streaming or downloading anything. So that is just a random network timeout, which is something that you have to watch out for when you are playing league versus league. We were in the middle of this one, I believe. Yeah, resume here. Hopefully, we do not get a second one. That's Honestly, that is the first network timeout that I have ever received when I am not switching between applications. I find that that happens on occasion. If I've got uh, NBA Live Mobile open on my phone because I play on my iPhone 6S Plus. All right, we got that taken away, which is nice. Yeah, when I'm playing on my phone... I find that uh, I have, oh, Singler misses again, damn. I find that it'll happen more frequently that I will have uh, network timeouts when I'm switching between applications, but I literally never get them otherwise. Let's see if Marshall can continue his magic. He can't. I said I was going to play more conservatively, and that network timeout spun me for a little loop, and I missed it. Ah, I missed the jump. He's going to hit that. This is going to be... Utter destruction in this quarter. It's very unfortunate. We had good opportunities, but I took a couple of unwarranted threes. One with Kendall Marshall, one with Jaleel Okafor. Let's see if we can get the ball back to Okafor. There he goes. He drives in for a nice easy two. That's what he's going to do for you. He's good in the paint. He, he plays really well on the move. He has decent speed and decent dribbling, as we saw. They were both better than Tim Duncan's. So let's get this back to Marshall. I'm going to give this over to Singler. We'll give him another try. He gets blocked, but it gets picked up by Okafor. Stoskis is going to get the ball stolen by Tim Duncan, surprisingly. That was a good steal by Duncan. Let's see if we can get the ball up for one more shot. Jaleel Okafor for two. He misses it on a rushed shot. And that's a very disappointing loss. It's not often you're going to see me lose a head-to-head -head quarter. But again, I'm trying to show off players. I don't really care that much. Um, about winning. It's just nice when we have the opportunity to do that as well. 
Anyway, that's going to be the end of this video for me. One other thing that I want to show you as I go over here and drop this back to my highest overall in case I get challenged in league versus league. If we go over to the two-way lineup, let's head back here. I opened a couple of packs this morning, managed to pull the 90 overall playoffs Kyle Korver. If you look at his stats versus T-Mac, he beats him in three-pointer defense and dribbling, loses in speed, shooting, and passing. It's um, Honestly, it's pretty close. 85 speed, 90 dribbling, 87 three-pointer. 77 speed, 91 dribbling, 93 three-pointer. So he's quite a bit better in those stats. Shooting, defense, and passing are all in the mid-70s. T-Mac shooting's at 93. His defense is very similar. And his passing's at 86. So T-Mac beats him, T -Mac beats him there. Um, but actually, if, you, if we show him versus League versus League Dwayne Wade, it's pretty close. Dwayne Wade's a bit better in speed, a better shooter, a bit better passer. Dribbling and defense are even, and his three-pointer is lower. I'm going to try to bring you a league versus league gameplay on Kyle Korver, head-to-head -head gameplay with Kyle Korver, so you guys can see him. He's not one of the most elite players that have come out of this playoffs promo, but he's high up there. One other guy that I want to show off a little bit over here is Jonathan Simmons. He's been causing some uproar because while he's only an 89 overall, and he's only 6'5", I believe, Let's see his height. I'm pretty sure in real life he's 6'5". Maybe he's listed at 6'6". Here, I don't know if it ever loads, which is taking forever. And there's another network timeout. That's very unfortunate. But let's get back into the game, and let's show that off again. So we're going to go back to my team. We're going to silence this notification. Let's go back to big man. So Jonathan Simmons is listed as 6'6". Six, six. I believe he's 6'5 in real life. But look at these stats, man. They're disgusting. His base stats, first of all, his, his defense is an 80. That's his worst stat by far. 3-pointer 85, passing an 87, and then 3 stats above 90. Look at him versus Neek. Neek's passing is a 71. His defense is a 79, which surprises me a little bit. 3-pointer is 76, dribbling an 82. Jonathan Simmons has him destroyed everywhere but shooting and speed. And Speed Simmons is still ahead. He's a 92 versus a 90. His shooting is a 93 versus a 95. So he's very close. And Neek is a 94 overall. So Simmons is another guy that I'm going to try to bring you gameplay um, from head-to-head -head and league versus league. So you get a chance to see him because both Simmons and Corver are a little bit on the expensive side. Um, but they are not the elite elite You've got that playoff Kyrie, I believe, who's a 94. And then you've got the Masters for each round. Those guys are also 94, 95. Um, but yeah, Simmons and Corver could be some of the lower end of the higher end that are options for people. And I want to show them off so that you get a sense of how they play. So those are two videos that are going to come up. Tomorrow, we're going to do the defensive lineups budget beast lineup we're going to take a look at that we're going to get into it and one other thing that i want to mention before i go is i've got a buddy of mine 4k tosh 4k a t o s h he's a moderator with me on nba live.gg he is also one of the newer game changers with ea and he currently has a giveaway for the 96 overall debt left shrimp that card is straight fire. Now, if we look in here, I checked earlier and there was not even one on the auction house. There still isn't. It's a rare card and the people who have him keep him because he is sick. So 4K Tosh is doing a giveaway. He is going to be holding a giveaway for the card and the winner will be announced as soon as the giveaway is over. I'm not 100% sure on the specifics. But again, that's 4-K-A-T-O-S-H Gaming. That's his handle. Check him out on YouTube. Check him out on Twitter. I've already uh, retweeted his giveaway. Anytime he tweets it out, I'll be sure to retweet it so you guys can see it. I'll post a link in the description because I want to make sure that you guys don't miss out. He's uh, he, he gives a lot of very good gameplay tips. We showcase slightly different things. 
he his whole his whole thing so far has been showcasing tips and tricks on how to improve your gameplay. I want to show you the gameplay of lineups, the gameplay of specific players, league versus league versus head to head. Um, but he's great for the little tutorials and stuff like that. If you need help with any aspect of your game, check out his videos. Like I said, the link will be in the description to both his channel, his giveaway, and his Twitter. Check my Twitter feed for retweets from his giveaway. And until then, I hope you guys like and subscribe and have a great week. And that will be it for me. Don't forget, you can check me out on Twitter at KCWINN66. And you can check me out on NBALive.gg with the same username. Don't forget to comment with what you want to see. I'm happy to put up videos for you guys. That's going to be it for me. Peace out.